Hi guys. Okay, listen. I'm gonna try again to explain um, how big this whole game is and outside the game. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna use the the board this time. And I've done this before, but I'm going to do it again because it's important. It's por important for y'all to understand how big, whoa, <laughs> sorry about that, how big this whole thing is, okay? Let me turn this a little bit. Let's see if, see if you can see this, I hope. Let's start over here. Okay. So, y'all know... I'll get a little bit of science here. Y'all know that um, here's our sun. Right there. And then here's our planets. Outside of it. And this is our solar system. This is, you know, Earth right here. Earth or Gaia. And we rotate around our sun. And that right there, that little group of planets going from right here all the way out to, well, what used to be Pluto. Now I don't know what it is. Or Uranus. One of those anyway. The furthest out planet. And they all circle the, uh, the sun. And that is our solar system. And then our solar system, now just think of that, and you can't, you can't even hardly fathom, I don't think, the planets that are rotating the sun. But, I, I, you know, how long does it take right now to get to Mars? I don't know, you'd have to look that up, but it would take a very long time just to get to Mars. I think that's the closest um, planet that we can get to, uh, that we can get on, would be Mars. And uh, I should Google that. But anyway, it takes a long time just to get to the closest planet in our solar system. Okay? Then this solar system, our solar system, is a tiny dot in the middle of our galaxy. And this is our galaxy. Okay? So we're a teeny tiny dot in the middle of this big old galaxy. Now, not too long ago, not too many years ago, they thought that there were thousands, I think, of galaxy, galaxies. Then they put the Hubble Space, I mean, the Hubble Telescope up, and they started taking pictures. And now it's up to somewhere between 100 billion and 200 billion <clears throat> galaxies. Now, remember... You, we are a one tiny planet in a solar system in this giant galaxy, and now they think that there are somewhere between 100 and 200 billion galaxies. Okay, are you with me on that? Now, it wasn't <clears throat> that long ago that they thought that there were just a thousand galaxies. Now it's up to 200 billion galaxies. And the reason why they believe that is because they've got a telescope that shows them a little tiny patch of it, and then they guess for the rest of it. Because they can't see the whole, everything around us yet. Okay. Now, when they can do that, they're going to build a better telescope, and it's going to see even further, and those numbers are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, this is just what you and I, as humans, can see. But as we've talked about, these are frequencies and things that you can see through the senses that you've been given, the five senses that you've been given, okay? Now they talk about dark matter, which I think is everything that you can't see. And yes, that it's full of stuff, too that you can't see, that someday maybe they'll be able to see. Okay, so you look up at the stars, and as far as you can see, and far, far beyond it, are 
billions upon billions upon billions of galaxies, okay? And we are in one galaxy, and we are a tiny little planet in a tiny little solar system in a great big galaxy in a place where there are billions upon trillions of galaxies, billions that we know for sure from human scientists, okay? So let's say the low end, 100 billion galaxies. 100 billion galaxies, right? Okay, now if there's 100 billion galaxies, does it make it a little bit easier to think that there's probably life out there? And is it, if there is life out there, which there's got to be life out there, guys, just percentage logic alone says that there's got to be life out there. Is it that hard to, to believe that there is life out there that's further along than we are? Okay? So now if you've got, you're talking 100 billion galaxies full of stars that have their own solar systems, that have their own planets going around them in their own way, of course there's life out there. Of course there is. You, you'd be ridiculously crazy at this point to assume that there's not life out there. Okay? Now, the life that is more like us, it you don't see them because they're like us. They can't get anywhere. Okay? The ones that can get somewhere know about this planet and know all the planets where the entities on the planets aren't very far along and they're dangerous okay we do have stuff to shoot into the air and hurt these beings from other places now out there there are lots and lots and lots of beings and just like the planet earth there are people on the planet earth that are really really good people and then there are people on planet Earth that are not very good people, okay? Well, out there in those 100 uh, billion to 200 billion galaxies and more, the same thing is true, okay? A lot of those entities, up, up until now, Earth has been in the third dimension, okay? That's where Earth has been. But now... The Earth is in the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension simply is talking about time and space. So as humans catch up to the vibration that Earth is now in, she's vibrating higher. She is now in the vibration of what, we would, what I would call fourth dimension because this is the dimension where all of those hundred billion... Um, galaxies and all the beings that are out there, we're going to join them in understanding how to truly understand time and space and manipulate them, okay? Now that gets you a lot closer to now time. A lot of these beings are still not in now time, but they're a lot closer. Being able to comprehend and work with time and space gets you a lot closer to now time. So Earth, the planet Earth, is now vibrating at what I would call the fourth dimension. Now, when we went from the third dimension to the fourth dimension, everyone that can hear and understand me was on the planet when it gradually has made the transformation from third dimension to the fourth dimension. As a matter of fact, there's a good portion of the planet that is in the fifth dimension right now. There are areas in Costa Rica and Kauai that spend a great deal of the time in the fifth dimension. There are places that humans are not, wilderness areas where there are little to no uh, humans that a lot of the time um, those areas are in the fifth dimension. There's a good portion of the energy that is Gaia herself, 
Gaia herself, the energy that is Gaia, is already in the fifth dimension. The earthlings, the humans on the planet, will be... <clears throat> will be the last entities that will change their vibration, the actual vibration of your body. You'll change that vibration, and you are, if you're standing on this planet, you are changing your vibration. You always have been. Either you're changing it going down, or you're changing it going up. It's always changing. Nothing holds still. That's impossible. Nothing anywhere holds still. Okay? So, Gaia is vibrating up and changing to the fifth dimension. You, as a creator God, can stand on this planet and work with Gaia, interact with Gaia, and your body will start, your skin suit, will vibrate differently, and it will increase its vibration, and it will go into the fifth dimension. Okay, with her. But you are a creator God, and you have every right to stay in the fourth dimension. And eventually, you can even go back to the third dimension. Okay? Out in all those 400, or those 200 uh, million, no, 200 billion galaxies that you can see, all of those 200 billion that you can see with the Hubble telescope, all of those um, galaxies and those planets are in the fourth dimension. Most of these areas, most of these planets and galaxies and solar systems are operating in the fourth dimension. There are a handful of of planets right now that have dropped down in the third dimension. But this is all new since Gaia started coming out of the third dimension and going into the fourth. When she came out of the fourth and the third dimensional game had been played, it's kind of like the template for the third dimensional game, part of this game, that intense, deep, physicality and deep amnesia that was third dimension once that template was was laid other planets agreed that that they wanted to try to go into the third dimension too that they wanted to play that game entities that are playing humanoid beings on those planets or beings on that planet also have agreed that they want to go to the third dimension. So they have dropped in vibration to play the game in the third dimension. And those numbers of the planets that started out just a couple are increasing more and more and more and more of them all the time. Okay? But the majority of the beings that are in, that you see out there, those 200, 200, uh, billion, that's what they're saying, galaxies, the majority of those are in the fourth dimension, and they know how to operate um, time and space. They can manipulate time and space. So they can travel across uh, great distances because they know how to basically fold um, time and space. Okay? The pigeons that I talk about the pigeons that are kind of um, the lighter, brighter, more spiritual aspect of the fourth dimension, if I'm just making it simple, that they use it more, they access that knowledge how to full time and space. They do it in a meditative state. They do have some uh, machines that they do it with, but the majority of it is with uh, in a meditative state. They're doing it with source energy. Okay? The other side, the geckos, what I call the geckos, who are the more dark side, um, they are, the geckos are more, um, whoever's the toughest, whoever's the strongest, they get to rule things. 
and there are galaxies, solar systems um, on that side that that's how they operate. The pigeons are more, they have groups that run things. So everybody votes on who's going to be in charge of these solar systems and, and uh, galaxies that are on the pigeon side. And they usually do it more like, like the Pope, you know, a great spiritual beings that can access show, uh, source really effectively. They're the ones that get voted in. And almost all of the pigeon groups are, are pigeon solar systems, planets, and galaxies are run by people who are sort of uh, voted in because they can access source energy so well to do these things, okay? And then they teach others uh, with very rigid rules on how to develop those abilities to access source energy to manipulate time and space and do many other things, okay? That's the fourth dimension. And Earth is in the fourth dimension. Now, most uh, Gaia is in the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension. The skin suits, the human skin suits that are on the planet, most of them are in fourth dimension at this time. There are times when some people who are aware of what's going on or the children, they will slip into the fifth dimension for split seconds of time. That's about all, is split seconds. And then they'll be brought back down. So... When I talk about going to the fifth dimension, I'm talking about vibrating in this skin suit at a higher vibration. And that's what the whole point is, defractaling. Defractaling yourself and as the earth is defractaling and those vibrations, they come together. The ones that have been split, they come back together come back together, and that makes a higher vibration. And with those higher vibrations comes less amnesia, more of an understanding that we are all one, and in that knowledge, that little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more, then there is a understanding that you and I are one. And the more you understand that you and I are one, the less harm is done, okay? So just by raising vibrations, the place is a nicer place because there's more of an understanding that we are one, okay? That's why things get nicer uh, in the fifth dimension. Things get nicer in the, in the fifth dimension because the amnesia goes away. And the amnesia is that you are separate and that you're not a god, that you're a lowly nothing, and uh, you have nothing to do and no input that has to do with anything with your life. That there are big bad powers all over the place, and they control everything, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay? That's the amnesia. As you raise and you defractal, and those things, those vibrations that have been divided and divided on this planet and in your skin suit, when they start defractaling and coming back together, the amnesia goes away. But whether or not you accept this new knowledge that's available, whether or not anyone on the planet, any human being on this planet, accepts that new information or not, is totally up to them. Um, every being has a right to believe or not believe whatever they want to. They're God. They get to do whatever they want. If you believe it and you work with this defractaline process, then you will get law of attraction works. If you lean into that, oh yeah, then that's a little bit of amnesia that goes away. And then that gets sent to the law of attraction. Amnesia is going away. It's the, lesson. it's the message that goes to the law of attraction. The law of attraction sends down more events around you that will prove to you that um, that you are a God. 
and that you are a part of the one. If you accept those, then Law of Attraction gets, oh, more amnesia is gone. Three times three is effective at that point, and you get even more and more and more. And as long as you keep bringing those things in and saying, oh, yeah, and truly remembering them, and believe me, Law of Attraction knows the difference between you just saying, oh, yeah, I remember that, and you really remembering it. When you really remember it, or uh, and fake it till you make it, it's totally good, so go with that. But there is a difference between the real thing. But you can accept it or not accept it. If for the people that are not accepting of, of lowering their amnesia, in other words, remembering who you really are, a lot of them, they have pre-planned to stay and play in the fourth dimension. Okay? Now, the beings, the human beings that are on this planet are gods. And they're playing within another god's game. Okay? So, here is these 200 billion, and there are some that say, that there are trillions, which they are much more accurate, 200 billion that you can see right now. And as you know, everybody knows that they don't know what's in the blackness out there that they call dark matter. Dark matter, what they can't see, Some of that dark matter is more fourth dimensional stuff that you simply can't see yet because you don't have the technology to do so. And some of it is fifth dimensional stuff. So when you get to the fourth dimension and you see everything that the fourth dimension can see, there's still going to be dark matter. And that dark matter is going to be the fifth dimensional stuff and beyond. And those areas will be fill in the blank as you move up through the dimensions. Okay. So all of these 200 billion and much, much more, all of that right there, we're going to say the majority of that is in the fourth dimension. All of this trillions. And I'm going to say trillions upon trillions is the fourth dimension. Now, when you understand that these beings are able to manipulate and work with and use time and space, then trillions upon trillions and moving through that kind of time space is not a big deal. They do it all the time. But this is still fourth dimension, and you're in it right now. So you can still, still see that there is contrast. There's a great deal of contrast. So, a lot of what you saw in 3D, third dimension had a lot of contrast between the light and the dark. 4D has all of that contrast still. The contrast of 3D, 4D, has all of the contrast of 3D, plus they can manipulate time space. Okay? This is the part that has defractaled for the majority of the fourth dimension. Things like, they're, they're much more aware in the fourth dimension of how to manipulate time-space, but they still are in pretty deep amnesia. They still, on the gecko side over here, the gecko side, they still have people that are way down here that believe that they're nothing. But... Just about anybody on the gecko side, if you work your way up, 
Yeah, well, however way you want to. There are pretty much no rules of the gecko side a lot of times. If you can work your way up through their society, then you can rule. So there, even though you start as nothing, in the fourth dimension, there is enough amnesia gone that they know that they have potential. They have a lot more potential, and they remember they have a lot more potential than in 3D, where there was no potential, where you were pretty much, you were born um, weak and separate, and um, if you did get anywhere, it was just uh, amazing if you could do it, because you were just such a nothing thing. As a human. Okay. On the pigeon side. Uh, the pigeon side. There is a lot more of. Of um, blood. So if you are. Um, <coughs> born of the right people. Um. Or there's a lot of cloning that goes on. There's a lot of um, making babies. So if you are uh, born where they've genetically manipulated you, there's a, there's a caste system with that. So if you were born um, just by two, pe two skin suits that had a baby, you are lower on the totem pole than one of these created um, these created people beings that were created by test tube babies okay there's so there's a caste system over here and although they know that there's potential because they know it's more like uh you got a better chance of getting there if you've got the genetic makeup to do it now in one way they're they're correct in that because in their genetic uh manipulation they've made it so that there's less amnesia with these people so it's easier for them to access source energy so they're capable of doing more things most of the time it has to do with the time space scenario but they also can do things like they don't need to eat or drink um some pigeons over here do that uh these guys the geckos over here don't they don't see any reason uh to spend any time on not eating uh, the, the, they enjoy eating and they want to keep it. It's a sign for them of if they're at the top, that they've got all the food that they ever want to eat. And if you're at the bottom, you don't. And it's a part of the perks that you get as you move up, as you work your way up. So they've kept food. The pigeons over here, it's kind of a part of their enlightenment and a sign that you are moving up towards possibly being one of the uh, ascended master people. Only they're ascended masters that haven't ascended. They're still alive, but it's like that. It's the same kind of, um, I'm kind of reading vibrations here. I don't know what they call them. But they're the ones that are in charge that have a lot of, um, they're like really spiritual leaders. And they're spiritual leaders because they don't have to eat or drink and they um, they glow they glow uh, because they're pulling in so much source energy um, they also they pull in a lot of source energy from source because they've lost enough amnesia that they know how to pull energy from directly from source but they also pull a lot of energy from the people below them but all of that energy pulling that they do that's uh, that does make them glow their, their skin glows so that's a sign so there are things like that that they can move through time space they don't have to eat or drink they you know there are things like that that their amnesia has gone away and they are kind of considered the leaders now just like we went from really deep heavy third dimension and moved up and defractaled along the way and to the point where when you stepped over into fourth dimension, you didn't even know you did it. The same thing is true with the fourth dimension. People are going to raise and do, raise their vibration, and they step into 5D, and there are other planets that are in the fifth dimension 
as we speak. They're already there. Okay, they've been there. There have been planets in fifth dimension that go in fifth dimension and leave fifth dimension and that are going in and leaving <clears throat> since this game be began. You are on a planet that just came out of the third dimension, was the first planet in this game to go into the third dimension. Okay? As I said, now there are others in third dimension, but Gaia is coming out of the third dimension in fourth, fifth dimension, going into fifth dimension. Then after that, she'll be uh, zooming on, but that's a, a planetary thing. And if you ever want to be a planet, you're going to be on the other side and you're going to uh, find out different things from the people, the entities that have been planets. Okay? All right. So here we're talking the fourth dimension, and I wanted you to realize of the part that you're aware of, the 200 billion galaxies, and that's just what you know about. I think it was like, I could be wrong, it's like 1970s or 80s, I think they thought there were a couple thousand galaxies. Let's just go with that. It's not, if I'm wrong, it's not going to be that far off. Let's say that in 1980, that we thought there were 2,000 um, galaxies. Now, in 2019, we believe that there are 200 billion galaxies. Wonder what we'll know in, two, in 10 years from now. Don't you? Anyway, the point of all that was to tell you how big the fourth dimension is. Fifth dimension, even bigger. Okay. All right. Now, all of that third, fourth, here's the planet Earth. And it's in this, coming out of the third dimension, and it's now in the fourth dimension, the solar system. And let's draw a picture here. This is the fourth dimension, all of the fourth dimension. Okay. Now, here is the entities, the beings that are in the third dimension. Here are entities that are in the fifth dimension. And then it goes on and on and on and on until beings leave the game. All right. So as you can see, here's the fourth dimension. Here's the third dimension. 3D, 4D, 5D, 60 and beyond 60, you're going to understand the sixth dimension when you're in the fifth dimension, but there is, there's not even any way I could describe this. This is like pure energy getting ready to create galaxies and planets and entities. That's what the sixth dimension is, is like the beginning of energy being formed, the birth of of planets and galaxies is the sixth dimension. The fifth dimension as a skin suit on one of those planets as she is like leaving, it's also leaving. It's coming in and going out of planets and galaxies is the sixth dimension. So Gaia is in the fifth dimension working towards the sixth dimension where she will leave the game. Now, remember 4D down here 200 billion galaxies that you know of. That you know of. Fifth dimension, lots, lots bigger. Sixth dimension, energetically, much, much, much bigger. Okay. All of this is one game. Remember, Earth, teeny tiny little dot in the middle of the fourth dimension. Okay. And she's moving a good portion of it in the fifth dimension. All of the rest of this stuff is going on and is a part of one game. This one game created by an individual just like you, just like you, 
a God, one of the whole, one God, just like you, just like you. No bigger or badder than you are. Just like you. You have created games too. Many, many, many of them. All of us have. All of us have. Okay, right now this part of you is playing in this guy's game. But you have played in uh, your own games, created your own games, played in other people's games, uh, <clears throat> and have been doing it for all eternity. Okay. This game is created based on contrast and amnesia. Okay. The first thing is to divide the all that is in this game. This is the part of the all that is in this game. And there was a division, which is where that whole yin-yang thing came up. And you've got the yin-yang right here. Yin-yang. And you've got a circle here and a circle here. And this is black. Oh, that's terrible drawing, but you guys know what I mean. And then this is dark here, and that's light there. <laughs> that's terrible. You guys understand anyway, right? And that little thing right there, it's like there's the all in here, all the energy representing all the different frequencies, all the different energies that is in the all that is, is in this circle, sort of. That's the best way of representing it. And what this being did that created this game said, okay, we're going to take all of this energy and we're going to arbitrarily divide it in half. All these energies are going to go on this side and all these other, the rest of the energies going on this side. And we made up what is called by humans the light and the dark. Okay, then it went the other direction with these two are representative of masculine and feminine. Again, arbitrarily division of energies. And this is kind of what fuels the whole thing. And then from this point, it was, I think, a circle like this. Divided all the frequencies in half and then in half again. And there's your first, here's your first fractal right there, that first line. That's the first Fractioning down, dividing down. That's what a fraction is. That's what fractaline is, is dividing, dividing. To have fractions of something is, is you're dividing something up. So a fraction is there are two halves in a thing, right? So there's two halves in a thing. That's fractaline. It's just making fractions, just dividing. That's all it means. It's dividing something down. Dividing it down. So here's your first fractal. There's your second fractal. And then they just kept going, kept going. And then these divided. And these divided. And then these divided. And then this divided. And this divided. And this divided. And this divided. Just kept on, kept on, kept on. Until it got down to the third dimension. That's why all of these little things f divided and divided and divided, and we were looking at all these tiny little aspects, all these little tiny lines of, okay, this is what happens. This is the existence that we have. This is me. This is the existence that I have in the all that is. I have access to every single thing all the time. Everything that's always been, everything that always will ever be, I have access to it. 
when I'm on the other side, when you're on the other side, that's our existence. Down in the third dimension, this is all it is. Or outside this game, this game, or when you die. And that's if you die and you don't incarnate back in the game, okay? This is where you go to the all that is, or it's also outside of this game is the all that is, and this is when you die, as long as you don't incarnate back into the same game, okay? Um, because you can incarnate back inside this the same game. You can't reincarnate now. Nobody can reincarnate right now. Because reincarnate is to incarnate again onto the same planet that you that you were last on. That's what reincarnation is. Is being born again on the planet that you just had been born on. That's reincarnation. Incarnation is when you are born on a on a planet. So you can be incarnated in physicality, usually incarn incarnate usually means physicality. It doesn't have to, but usually it does. You can be born into a skin suit of some sort in on another planet within that game, okay? But this over here, the all that is, this is outside of that game, outside of all games. Let's say I'm not playing any games. I'm, I'm dead, I died, and I'm sitting here in the all that is, and I'm not in any of the games. I'm just sitting there in Source, merged with Source, just hanging out. And I have access to everything. Over here, within the game, I just have... Oh. Let's say you're, you're incarnated in the game. I don't know what... This is the contrast game. We're going to call this the contrast game. You are in the contrast game. I don't like that name. I need a better name for this game. We need a, we need a name for this game. We need a name for this game. We need a name for this game. Okay, but right now it's the contrast game. So you're incarnated into the contrast game. As you come into it, you are going to lose a bunch of this because it's the contrast and amnesia game, and you're a tiny little skin suit. So let's say... Okay, you're already divided into the into this division and this division. So let's go that you are over here. You're over here and you pick this planet. And this planet is in fourth dimension. So you're going to be born on this planet. You only have access. Let's make this you. And this is the planet that you were born into. In the contrast game, you are born on this planet. Well, this planet, you only have access to what is available on this planet. So it's limited. Based on this game and this planet, and this planet is a pigeon planet, pretty severe pigeon planet so you have to choose whether or not to be pigeon or not pigeon if you're not pigeon most of the time you're going to be uh let's say that you fight the pigeons uh from the get-go you fight the pigeons well probably most of the time you're going to be in first a school uh to try to get you to follow their way and then you'll be in kind of this um intense rehab center um, until you do as they say, and you, you will eventually, um, follow them because they have all kinds of procedures to make sure that you do. Um, most of the time people just go to school and they just follow them just like they do here. People just 
follow Christianity. They don't really know why. Nobody reads the actual Bible. And uh, they just do because um, their parents did. Uh, society did. So that's pretty much how it is over here um, with the pigeons. A little bit more intense with the geckos, but that's what you're born in. So you incarnate here, and you go down here, and you're with the pigeons, and you follow their rules. Well, instead of being over here, where you've accessed everything that was, by choosing to be born on this tiny little planet in the fourth dimension, within the contrast game, you only have access to, let's say, instead of all that is, you only have access to about, oh, 4%. Of all that is. But you're going to take that 4% and you're going to experience it intensely in all these minute ways. So instead of being sidetracked with all of this, all of this, all that is, you're going to focus very intensely on this 4%. Of the all that is. And you're going to learn everything there is to know about how to live in that 4% of the all that is. That's the point. To really focus on just 4% of the all that is. Okay. That's why everything is fractal down, divided down. To create these places that you can go and experience, and instead of having all that it, all of it running around you, run around you, you've got it set up a playground, so to speak. Although most of you don't like the playground, there's not much playing going around. But it is a backdrop, a setting, so that you are forced, essentially, forced. At, You've agreed to it because you knew it was going to happen. But you're essentially forced to stay and only deal with this certain amount of frequencies from this certain arena and this certain um, setup and this certain um, <clears throat> backdrop and with these certain ideas and people. People, places, and things. Okay? Okay. Are you with me? Okay, so now you understand that you are on a planet, and this teeny tiny dot of a planet is inside of a game, and here's the game. The game is the game of contrast. This is the game of contrast. And you're a tiny little dot in that, and within this is um, all of the 200 billion galaxies in the fourth dimension. Fifth dimension is within this game of contrast. All of this was created and started by one entity, started the whole shebang. But once he started this first division, then other entities, other gods, went, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he said, well, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to divide this down into this side and this side. And they started coming in and playing with him. And there is no um, ego. There's no, I, oh, it's my game. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. There's none of that. You're dealing with gods here, the very head of this. So they come and jump in, and they have their ideas. And, they, and, and entities just keep coming and coming and adding their ideas to the to the game of contrast until it gets way more complex more and more and more complex and it is a it is a very complex game it's not a very big game in the scheme of things after everything i've told you about how huge it is according in time space um it is huge to a human being it's absolutely mind-boggling you can't even figure it out it's so big it is that big however it is, it is pretty small when it comes to other games that are out there. Okay? So, this is just one little game. Now, that game that I just described. Okay. 
like I said, fourth dimension is within the game of contrast. Okay? It is simply a vibrational change in the skin suit that you're at. Okay? This is different than dying. You don't, if you die, you're probably not going to go to 5D. You're going to leave the game altogether. Um, I don't see anybody dying and coming back on 5D Earth. Um, not at this point, because we're so close to 5D. If you want to go to 5D in a skin suit, you would stay in this skin suit and just vibrate up a little bit further and be in 5D Earth. So most people are dying. They're leaving the game. Most people. There are um, uh, humans that have died over the last 10, 20 years that have gone um, back into the 3D game on other planets. There are people who are incarnating. Uh, well, I should say there are quite a few people uh, out of the 7 billion there are quite a few of the people that are going to be dying that are not the kids, not since, oh, 25-year-olds, easy, easy and below. A great many of them are not incarnating into this contrast game. Uh, older than that, there are quite a few that are incarnating back into this game. A lot of them are incarnating into fourth dimension. Because fourth dimension has so, it's so big, uh, very physical, very much the same game that was on Earth. So now it's the same kind of game, except now you're dealing with time space. So it becomes a lot of like um, Star Wars, Star Trek, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of people that are older than uh, 25 or 30 that are incarnating back on the planets that are in the fourth dimension. But... Um, not, I, I would say, I'm not going to say none, but right now I can't see anybody who is incar reincarnating back on planet Earth in the fifth dimension from right here. Uh, there's plenty that are, um, there's quite a few humans that are already in 5D Earth, <laughs> that are already there, and uh, there's plenty already there. There'd be no need for any more. So, uh, yeah, most of them are either going out of the game altogether upon death, they're leaving the game altogether, or they're incarnating on another planet on one of the other um, dimensions. Yeah. Okay. So... Now that you understand that this is a part of the game, and this is just one game. Here's one little game. And there are... Okay. If I put these dots out here on this deal, and each one of them was a different game that was... That was okay, that's one game, and all of these others are different games. And I put a dot... A tiny dot, pinprick, pin, dot. And I put this with the black marker over and over and over so much that they were solid black. You still wouldn't come close to how many games are available for you to go and visit when you die. Or when you, you know, you leave the skin suit, because really there's no such thing as death. There's no such thing as death. No, nobody dies. You just simply change clothes. And you leave behind... The skin suit, because the skin suit that you're in, this is a part of Gaia. You can't take that with you because it's going to go back to Gaia. The energy that is this skin suit, it's going to go back and merge back with Gaia because it is a part of Gaia. And you're going to leave, your consciousness is going to leave whenever this one, you're done with this skin suit and it dies, dies, and it will transform and go back into Gaia. Uh, go back and merge with Gaia, and your consciousness will go back and merge with Source, or you'll you'll go start your own game, or you'll go join one of these other games, one of the infinite number of games that you can play. Okay, all right. So let me um, answer this question by show me what I need to know. 
The question is, how can everyone and everything here be a manifestation of the one God, yet we are also individual gods? That the, the question is kind of the issue. How can everyone and everything be a manifestation of the one God? It isn't like that. It's like the one God did not manifest everything uh, because the one God is you. We are the one God. So we did it. You did it. We did it. No separate thing that was over here up No separate God force over here took source energy and pulled out this and this and this and now made me. That's not what happens. Um, I am a part of source. I am source. You are source. And I accumulated... Um, the aspect. I, we are aspects of the God. There is not a separate God over here. We are all aspects of the all that is. We are um, a different face of the all that is. We aren't a part of the all that is. We are the all that is. You, you have access at any given time to merge with all that is. You are all that is. You are simply a different aspect looking at it from a different perspective. Okay? But there wasn't any separate thing that uh, created all of us. Uh, we did it. We, we did it. And we, by we, I mean the all it is. You are the all it is. Uh, we manifested ourselves. So that's how we're individual gods. We're not even individual gods, although we are individuals, uh, because we choose to be. If you don't want to be an individual, all you can do is not be it. You can be whatever it is that you want to be. Okay? So the more that you understand that, the less 3D and 4D work, because it makes it almost impossible for um, us to compete. Um, it's very difficult for me to compete with you um, at all. Why, why would I do that? That's like, makes no sense. Uh, competition makes no sense whenever you uh, are feeling that we're one. <laughs> yeah, it makes absolutely no sense to compete. And there's a lot of competition in 3D, 4D. A lot of competition in 3D, 4D. That's uh, part of the contrast. And part of the game. Right? Okay. All right. I think that's enough of that. Um, thank you all for sitting through all of that. If you have any questions about uh, this video, please be sure and comment below. I'll be happy to answer them as best I can. Um, yeah, I... Where's my... Where's my glasses? <laughs> okay, well, I'll do it later because I can't find my glasses. Can't find my glasses. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, guys, uh, thank you so much. Oh, that's going to be a joke <laughs> that they're hanging right behind me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's a good one. All right. Um. Okay. All right. Really, nothing more than that. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Thank you so much for um, assisting me with PayPal and Patreon. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Um, look forward to any session with y'all. It's just very exciting for me to do those sessions. And um, 
yeah, I'm getting a feeling that there's a lot of people out there I could help with these. Um, I'm really don't tell y'all what I'm, what I can do, but there's really uh, when I connect with you, uh, I hate to word, use the word psychic, but I can just see a lot of things. Um, time space don't doesn't doesn't interfere with what I can see. So I see a lot of people that are really, really close to 5D. So although you don't need my help, your creator gods, you're entirely capable of doing it yourself. But if I can give you a hand, um, reach out, okay? Uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, can you guys believe that I've got 1,300 subscribers? Remember when I was so excited when there were 50? Uh, yeah, I, I, it's just amazing to me that there are 1,300 people that are interested in what I have to say. Um, I think that's what took me so long to write the book, is that I found it hard to believe that anybody would be interested in, or believe it, because some of the stuff that, well, a lot of the stuff I have to say is pretty darn wild. So, yeah, I really, really uh, appreciate you guys, and appreciate you being there, appreciate your comments and your questions. The questions are so much fun, um, and I enjoy triggering your memories. That's really what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to trigger your memories so that amnesia will drop away. Um, so you can do this stuff on your own. That's kind of what I'm, I'm going for. Kind of get you to remember the God that you are. Okay, so uh, thanks for everything. I really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, I'll see y'all later. Huge hugs. Bye now.